to our service on this Easter day. I know, hooray, let's go. It is lovely to see uh, so many people in here. It is lovely to see an actual Easter bonnet, fascinator. Yay, that's what we Um, I, I, have, I have warning for the young people, we have a special guest appearance later on, but we're going to start with our service of acknowledgement, our acknowledgement. We begin by acknowledging the traditional territory upon which we stand. For many thousands of years, the Sinaiaks and other peoples have sought to walk gently on this land. They offered assistance to the first European travellers to this territory and shared their knowledge for survival in what was at times a harsh climate. We seek a new relationship with the original peoples of this land, one based in honour and deep respect. And now we get to sing together, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, number 203 in the Blue Books.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. That was pretty good. But it's Easter, 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 people. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. That was good. Okay, remember that because you're going to need it later on. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. We join together in the prayer, uh, opening our hearts to God. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We sing glory to God in the highest. special prayer for this Sunday. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Would the older people like to be seated, and would the younger people like to join me? Younger in this case means people who like chocolates. <laughs> hey Marcus. Hey Malcolm. Okay. So. I promised you a special guest on Easter Day. Who do you think the special guest might be? The Easter Bunny, except in this church we do not have an Easter Bunny. We have an Easter Doggy. Okay. 
this is the first of many eggs we have having today. <laughs> special quiz for those who were older, but apparently that could, oh here's the quiz, okay, I've got the quiz, okay, so for those who are old, too old to go to Sunday school, but too young to stay awake during the sermon, <laughs> there's a quiz and there's a promise of edge with the quiz. That's interesting. Who's doing the first reading? Looks like I am. Looks like you are. <laughs> Resurrection of the Lord. A reading from Acts 10, 34, 43. Then Peter began to speak to them 
I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day. God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us, the church. Thank you. You might as well continue. Our psalm today is Psalm 118. Starting with the first two verses and then going to verses 14 to 22. Psalm 118, which is found on page 866 of the Green Service books. Let's say it uh, responsibly by the half a verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let Israel now proclaim His mercy endures forever. At verse 14, The Lord is my strength and my song. And he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory. In the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live. I declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely. But he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for you answered me. And have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So, do we have somebody who is lined up to read the second reading? Oh, great! <laughs> this is a reading from Corinthians 1. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order. Christ, the first fruits, then at, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ, then comes the end. 
when he hands over the kingdom of God to the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. Hear what the Spirit has to say to us, the church. Our next Easter song is number 205 in the Blue Books, The Day of Resurrection. According to Luke. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners to be crucified and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words, and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Now may the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be guided by God, Father, Jesus, Saviour, 
and the Sacred Spirit. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Pretty good. You're still awake there. That's good. This week, through Holy Week, there's a theme that's kept coming back to me again and again and again. And that theme has been the theme of service. Jesus, uh, sorry, Luke has a lot to say about that in our readings. Luke um, has the story of the, the disciples arguing about who is the greatest. And he has that at the Lord's Supper, at, at the, the last meal that Jesus had with his disciples. And at that meal, Jesus says, I am among you as one who serves. In our service on uh, Thursday, the first of the, the three days of Holy Week and Easter, we remembered John's story of Jesus washing his disciples' feet, which was a job for the lowest servant in the house. And every th Monday, Thursday, we wash each other's hands as, as a way of remembering that. Jesus comes to his final day passive. Um, he enters what we call Good Friday as a, as a servant. He's almost silent through his trial and torture and death. We see this in the reading that Richard just uh, read for us, where it says, The Son of Man must be handed over to uh, sinners and be crucified. Those verbs are passive and not active. They're not what Jesus did, but what he suffered. And on the first Easter day, the women come to Jesus, knowing him to be passive again, in need of their ministry. They come as servants. They come to perform the unhappy, unholy task of embalming the body. Unhappy because they loved this man. Unholy because touching a body made you ritually unclean. That's why it couldn't be done on the Sabbath. That's why Jesus had to spend the extra day in the tomb. The women did this because they were acting as servants. Interesting point that I discovered uh, as I was researching for this was that the Jewish practice at that time was to embalm a body, but not to preserve the body. So it wasn't like the, the embalming that you might have seen the, the Egyptian pharaohs did, trying to preserve the body for as long as possible. The body was washed and anointed with perfumed spices and oils. And then it was left in the tomb for a year until the body had become bones. Then the body was removed and the tomb could be used for another body to be transformed in. But that's not how Jesus' body was transformed. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not sure. I might have a bit more of this. So the women came to the two uh, as servants to the tomb to serve the servant, to do for Jesus what he could not do for himself because he was dead, to wash him and anoint him and pour their love over him. But that's not what happened. Because Jesus is no longer passive, no longer silent, no longer given over to the corruption and cruelty of man. As the angels say, he is not here, he is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is active and at work. He is being and doing. He is powerful and engaged. He has achieved what he came to do. He has saved 
who he came to save. He has shown God's love in word and deed and death. The servant has served. He has laid down his life. And now he picks it up again. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. And as he picks it up, one set of servants meets another set of servants. The carers meet the messengers. The women meet the angels. And the full message of what we now know as the Gospel is entrusted to human messengers, human servants, for the first time. The angel messengers tell the women what has happened. And the women understand. And the women believe. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. As good servants, the women pass on the message they have received, only for the disciples to reject it. Those eleven who were at Jesus' last meal were arguing about who was the greatest. Those eleven who considered themselves the leaders, they wouldn't believe the message yet. The servants get it and the leaders do not get it. It takes Jesus appearing to Peter for the disciples to believe. Through the seven weeks of Lent, we've been studying and considering what our call is who we are to be, both individually and as a, as a community. And today I want to offer you one more call, one more way in which we can follow Jesus' example and heed Jesus' call. Jesus was a servant. He says, I am among you as one who serves. His service brought him to earth and led him to the cross. He was passive, obedient at his trial and crucifixion. Beyond his death, he rose again. Alleluia! Christ is risen. And he continues to serve as he continues to save the cosmos, that wonderful word we, we were thinking about, which means everything that God created, everything that God loves, each one of us, our town. Jesus continues to serve and to save us. And he does this all as a servant. It's not a surprise that the servants understand and believe before those who consider themselves leaders. And so our call on this Easter day, as we celebrate our servant king, is to emulate our servant king. For we will only know Jesus to the extent that we are willing to be servants. Amen.
faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Now, Richard will lead us in our prayers. Please feel free to sit, kneel, or stand as you feel comfortable. Let us pray to God who raised Jesus to new life for the needs of the church and for the world. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond with, hear our prayer. In our world, we pray for peace everywhere, especially in Ukraine. Please add your own prayers for our world. Lord, in your mercy, in our national church, we pray for the Anglican Church of Canada, Right Reverend Linda Nichols Primate. We pray for the Most Reverend Anne Germond, Archbishop, and the clergy and the people of the Diocese of Algoma. We pray that we continue to raise up a truly Anglican indigenous church in Canada. Please add your own prayers for our church. 
Pray for the other churches in our town, in Trail, for all of those who are gathered um, for worship and celebration on this Easter Sunday. Lord, in your mercy. In our own Diocese of Kootenai, we pray for our Bishop, Lynn McNaughton. We pray for St. Saviour's Penticton, Nick Payne, incumbent, Richard Simpson, deacon, Pat Simons, deacon, Peter O'Flynn, honorary assistant. Please add your own prayers for our diocese. Lord, in your mercy. In our communities, we pray for those who struggle to meet daily needs. We pray for all those who face, face mental health and addictions issues. We pray for all those who work in essential services. And we pray for FAIR and the volunteers in the West Kootenai Boundary Regional Crisis Program. Please add your own prayers for our communities. Lord, in your mercy. In our own congregation, we pray that God's love will surround and support those in our community who are in the presence of life's challenges remembering especially all those named in our bulletin today and Lois Palmer, father of Barbara Gunn, Ian, Roma and Michael Glass, and Terry Bublitz. Please add the names of any others who may be in your hearts and minds today, either silently or out loud. We give thanks for the lives of Harvey Pittman, Joe Wilde, and Ron Scott. And we pray for their families as they go through this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy. Through the resurrection of your Son, O God, you destroy the power of death, raise us from sin, and seat us at the Paschal Feast, that we may rejoice in the gift of salvation Jesus has won for us. In his name we pray. Amen. Would you stand for our confession? Brothers and sisters, on this Easter day, we remember and rejoice in everything that Jesus did so that we might have a relationship with God. God welcomes all of us to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and be humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in your goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. We light our peace candle as a sign of our prayers for the peace of the world, and we sing our peace song.
Now, as we prepare for our uh, Eucharist, we sing number 232 in the Blue Books. Jesus is risen from the dead. 